Hello, hope you guys are doing well. I don't know if you remember, but a while back I did a video comparing the sharpening tools with Lightroom using Fujifilm files and comparing that to what Capture One and Luminar could do. And if you don't remember the gist of it, basically Luminar and Capture One were so easy to use and did a better job processing the raw files uh, and just blew Lightroom out of the water. But in the comments of that video, someone asked if I could follow up because Lightroom actually added a new slider called the Texture Slider. And will it help with Fujifilm files? And we're about to find out. I have no idea. <laughs> so let's do it. Oh, I got my glasses on because I can't see my computer anymore. <laughs> I don't want to spend too much time on this. I really don't like pixel peeping and, and examining too much of my images. This is more out of curiosity. And the first thing I want to try out, here's our Capture One image on the right. By the way, this is Capture One Express Fujifilm 12.0, which by the way is a free software. So you can start bringing your Fujifilm files in for free into Capture One and kind of get used to their little ecosystem. So I think that's great that they offer Fujifilm Express, a free software to process your Fujifilm files. I think that's really cool. How about that, Adobe? Anything free? Hmm. All right, we're gonna call our control group on the right here. This is Capture One. Capture One straight in as soon as the image comes in of the chicken. Uh, again, we showed this in the last video, but I love that you could just use your slider to get the detail and the sharpening all together just with one slide. You don't have to really even use a lot of the other stuff on most of your images. And here on the left is the raw file of the chicken in Lightroom. And the issue we were having last time, this is now uh, Lightroom 11.3, is anytime we wanna sharpen, that, uh, this is an extreme example by the way, but we get crazy wormage and artifacts. If you can see, I'm, <laughs> by the way, never look at your images this close, it's useless. No one's ever gonna notice this if you print or if you put it on Instagram. This is all just for informational purposes. But we do get crazy, um, that's over sharpened, by the way. Uh, we get crazy artifacts, which was our issue last time. And remember, you can mask off the edges. Uh, but again, no matter what we did using detail and this and that, the uh, sharpening was always a little bit strange, which is what we thought. So there are two things I want to sort of check in this video. We'll keep this guy open as our control group. Let's just go halfway on the sharpening there. Nice crystal clear eye. Uh, and the Lightroom, one, it's by the way, it's not bad. Like no one will ever notice. I'm noticing here on the beak, if I'm looking at sharpness on two of them, uh, I'm noticing that because I'm just staring at them. All right, this is the first thing I wanna show you, the enhance detail. If you go to um, photo and go to enhance detail, Lightroom will create a DNG file, which is slightly annoying. They create an extra file and they give you what's considered or what they considered a slightly more detailed uh, version of your image. And uh, to be honest, I could tell that it's a little more detailed. Look at the beak. The beak is slightly more detailed and the enhanced detail seems to match up with the, um, you know, Capture One. Let me put these guys together here. Boom, enhanced detail and the Capture One control group. And if we add a little bit of sharpening to the enhanced detail, um, you know, the artifacts are still there, but they're not bad. And if I'm looking at, at a normal one-to-one, -one, then the enhanced detail with the sharpening seems to do a pretty decent job. Uh, again, not as easy as Capture One, which is just a slider. You have to create another file, a DNG, and then you still have to sharpen a bit uh, if you want to get a little bit of a crisper image. Let's say it's a landscape or something like that. So that's the enhanced detail. Um, it, you know, I like that they're trying, but as soon as you have to make a brand new DNG file, you lost me, okay? Just put the sharpening tools that are found in uh, Adobe Photoshop, and we showed that in our last video, but here, for example, is the JPEG that comes out. This is a JPEG uh, out of a Fuji file using the 56 millimeter 1.2, and this is the raw file. You know, the raw file we show has crazy artifacts. And if we look at, you know, the JPEGs doesn't have any of this wormage or anything because it uses all kinds of special algorithms. Uh, but if we go to a Photoshop file, I wish that Lightroom would give us the Photoshop 
um, you know, sharpening tools because this we brought into Photoshop in the last video and sharpened it and it does an unbelievable job of sharpening. Anyway, going back to the regular raw file, we want to see if this texture, <clears throat> sorry, if this tech, I'm getting all clamped here, if this texture slider really does anything. So let me get rid of the sharpening. Let me double click. This is 40 is the well, should we go to zero? Let's go to zero, make it a little hazy, and then we'll go to 40. 40 is like the default when it comes in. But texture is, you know, just like a little bit of a less aggressive, um, like clarity seems to uh, work on the mid-tones. So it kind of gives a big, you know, uh, aggressive crunch to your image. And texture seems to work like structure does in a lot of the other editing apps, like your phone or even Capture One structure. Um, so that seems to give a little bit more edge detail. However, I know that when I've been going up with texture a little high that the image starts to look a little strange if you look up close, if you start pixel peeping. So it seems to work better with certain images. So let's see if a combination of texture and sharpening can get us to the simple halfway sharpening of Capture One. So here we go. Okay, let's start at the deep. This is what it looks like with no sharpening. Let's go to the default when it comes in, which is about 40 sharpening. I'm looking at the beak. The beak looks better in Capture One. And let's see if we use texture. Can we get the beak to look like Capture One's? I'm looking at this little particle on these little lines here. Um, if I use texture, yeah, we could get a little better there. Um, about that, it just gives the image a little bit more contrast. Uh, I don't see too many crazy artifacts. So with, you know, maybe a combination of texture and the sharpening together will get you closer to some decent sharpening without having to run around and grab a enhanced detail image, which by the way, if you were working in Lightroom uh, with a Fuji file and you were working on one photograph, then I recommend it, sure. But if you're batch processing images, I don't see myself making lots of, um, DNG files of my images. It definitely is an improvement all over using just the weak, terrible sharpening tools that Lightroom gives you. Uh, I would say a little bit of sharpening. Let's uh, mask that puppy off. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key. Just get those edges. Alt key, bam. Uh, so sharpening at there, and then my texture goes up a little bit, and then Nice contrast in case we want to match the contrast here. If we want to, you know, uh -huh. shadows, color, a little clarity. <laughs> it looks great. So with a combination of clarity and texture and sharpening, you can somewhat get the same results as the single slider in Capture One. But I recommend just finding which one works best for you. I have a Lightroom workflow for work, so my Fuji files do end up there, even though I try to keep them in Capture One as much as possible. The Lightroom workflow for me is just so much easier right now. Uh, maybe this summer I'll uh, sit down with Capture One a little bit more. Um, but anyway, let me know what you think, because I love learning from you guys below. So uh, keep your comments coming below to help me and help other people, uh, just so we can be better, become better, and uh, just help each other out. All right, I'll see you guys next time. <music>